Our discussion in this chapter has been leading up to kind of this point. Um, we did some calculations of the um, different volumes of these crystals, these cells, and uh, we calculated their density. Then we started characterizing what they looked like and how they were structured. And now we're going to kind of put it all together to a certain extent in the concepts of linear density and planar density. Now linear density is a fairly simple concept. Um, density usually people consider, well, it's the amount of something within a volume. So mass divided by volume. It's similar, but not the same. We're looking for the number of atoms that are traversed throughout a unit length of a direction vector. So we've discussed our directions. So say a 1, 0, 2 direction or a 1, 2 bar, 1 direction. So how many atoms do we pass through to uh, when we go along this unit length? So it's, again, fairly simple. Now the number of atoms, we have to remember here, we're not talking about how many we touch, but how many we directly go through a radius. So if you count the specific radiuses that we go through, and you divide by two, that's the number of atoms, because a radius is only half the distance through an atom. So let's see how that works. Here we have a face-centered cubic cell and we're looking at the 110 direction. Now notice we have a side A here, considering it's cubic. So this 110 length, the length of this line here um, in the 110 direction is A times the square root of 2. And we traverse, count them, 1, two, three, four radii. And so we traverse a total of two atoms. So in this case, we would have two as the number of atoms we traverse. Now if we apply that to an aluminum atom, so the linear density of aluminum in this direction in one of its cells. So A, we already have a value for that for aluminum. is 0 0.405 nanometers. And the number of atoms, as I just explained, is 2. So we've got four radiuses, radii. Divide that by 2. We get two atoms that we go through. And our length is the square root of 2A. Because if this is side A and this is side A, then that uh, distance from the first to the end of the second is along uh, a 45 degree angle. So it's going to be the square root of 2a. So a squared plus a squared equals 2a squared. Take the square root of that, and you get the square root of 2a. If you take 2, and we divide by the square root of 2 times 0.405, we end up with a value of 3.5 with the units of atoms per nanometer, or times nanometer to the negative one. So it's atoms per nanometer. To uh, do it in a different vector, let's take this color and go along this vector down here. Okay, this is fairly simple. This is along the one zero zero vector. Now this is a great example to bring up the family of directions as well. Um, the one zero zero is equivalent to this one. You'll find the exact same uh, structure going and distances and numbers of atoms and so on going along this vector. And this vector uh, would be the uh, zero, zero, 001 vector. So you can say, well, here, here's our origin. I said, well, I move the origin and I move where we're going. And 
there it is. There's our new uh, origin, and I've decided that this is going to be our new X direction, and it doesn't really matter because I could choose this one, and it's going to be the same. So to that end, we have 1, 2, or for my original, we have 1, 2 radiuses that we traverse, which means we have one diameter. So we only have one atom that we traverse, and we're dividing by A, because that's our side length, that's the distance of our unit vector. And so we take one atom, and I divide by 0 0.405 nanometers. And fairly easy calculation to get 2.4 seven atoms per nanometer. We can do the same thing with planes. In fact, it's very helpful to do the same thing with planes. Why would we want to examine the atomic packing of these crystallographic planes? One great reason is that these metals, sometimes, can be used as catalysts. And if you have a certain plane exposed to the chemicals that it's supposed to be catalyzing, there could be a lot of these metal atoms exposed to the chemicals, or there could be very few, even if it looks like the same surface area. So we want to maximize, maybe, or at least control what's exposed to these chemicals that are supposed to be catalyzed. So, for example, iron foil can be used as a catalyst. Um, we want to look at the 100 and the 111 crystallographic planes and figure out how many atoms are exposed per unit area for each of these planes. Again, this is for an, a chemical reaction. Okay, so we have um, a BCC structure here, and we want to calculate the planar density of the 100 plane in iron. Now, if you remember, the BCC structure shows that the um, body centered atom does not allow the other corner atoms to touch each other. So they're kind of spaced here. Well, they might have a different density than a different plane would have. So here's our two-dimensional repeat unit. We don't consider the, uh, the body centered one uh, because it's too far down. It's shielded from the outside from this plane of atoms. So we look at this side A is 4 square root of 3 over 3 divide, uh, multiplied by the radius. And we got that from earlier in the chapter. We have a radius of iron. R is 0 0.1241 nanometers. Now how many circles are actually in this box? Well, quarter, 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 quarter. We've got four quarters. That makes one whole. So for this area, we have one atom. And so we use something similar as the linear density. Atoms for every 2D repeat unit, in this case, just count it up one, and then their area. So one divided by this value for A, and then we square that. We end up with 12.1 atoms per square nanometer this time. We uh, multiply by 10 to the 9th nanometers 
per meter, and then we square that, we end up with 1.2 times 10 to the 19th atoms per square meter. If we wanted to make that into centimeters squared, we'd have the same 1.2 times, and we'd have to take 4 off of here, so 1.2 times 10 to the 15th atoms per centimeters squared. Now what about the 1, 1, 1 plane? Let's look at maybe a better view of this 1, 1, 1 plane. So we want a body-centered cubic 1, 1, 1 plane. Here it is. Kind of tip the cube on its side. Tilt it up. Or looking straight down through the corners. From one corner straight down through the middle to the other corner. And perpendicular to that is our 1, 1, 1 plane. We were just looking at the 1, 0, 0 plane. And that's what this looks like very boxy, very square, just what we were looking at. And so which has a greater density uh, exposure of its surface, the 1, 0, 0 plane or the 1, 1, 1 plane? Well, let's do the calculations. So we look at this repeat unit. Here's the re the actual repeat unit. It looks like you could use a triangle, and you probably could and get the same calculations. But the true repeat unit is this one. This is an atom above the plane. Basically, we got rid of it. And this is an atom below the plane. And remember that it doesn't count because it's shielded from the uh, surface by the other uh, three. So neither of these two count. So within this area, we see that we have one-sixth here, two-sixths here, one-sixth here, and two-sixths here. That is a total of six-sixths, or one atom. So that makes our calculations a little bit easier. We have a height of square root of three-halves a. We have a side of square root of two a. Remember these are, this is a, this is square root of 2a here. Each one of these is square root of 2a. So each one of these is square root of 2a. And to make the height, we use geometry and we get this value. So we take the height, multiply by the base, which is again square root of 2a, and we end up with an area of 16 square root of 3 over 3 r squared. So we've got one atom for this much area, and we use the radius of the iron. And doesn't show the uh, laying that out there, but we end up with seven atoms per square nanometer. And that is uh, 0.7 times 10 to the 19th atoms per square meter. The previous one was 1.2 times 10 to the 19th atoms per square meter. So if we use this face of the uh, bulk material, we will have only seven twelfths, if you will, only maybe a little bit more than one half than if we had used the other plane. Now, let's look at some more examples of these planes. Here are some other planes that could be used for this BCC structure. Could even go to the full sphere representation. You can see that. 
and then let's look at the 111 plane and it's a little bit less dense I guess 112 plane notice how they're not even necessarily the same distance apart all the time in the 111 or the 112 plane uh, these two are much closer than these two so you could even use these channels possibly for some uh, purpose and then 112 plane is much much less dense than the other ones for FCC going to look at the 100 plane and now the 110 plane 110 plane looks less dense than the 100 plane but the 111 plane looks much more dense and this is the plane that we're staring down from the side That includes, therefore, this corner, this corner, and this corner, as well as the face atoms in between. And we covered this earlier on in the chapter, how this is a close-packed plane. This is not close-packed. I hope that this has been uh, a very helpful lecture for you and uh, continue going to the other videos to find uh, some possible other examples of how to calculate and do some of the problems that are associated with this material.